I think we're living in the dark ages or have been. Mm. And I think that my daughter's generation, you know, will will be treated hopefully very differently. And they'll look back at this time and they'll say with incredulity, well, what do you mean they expected you to live and survive without, without. your hormones? I had no idea what the word perimenopause meant until yeah. a friend of mine who's about a year older than me mentioned it. And probably like you thought that the menopause was something we'd seen in sitcoms where the woman yes. has lots of hot flushes yeah. and you know oh well I didn't have any of that so yeah. but then there was a eureka moment on my podcast when a guest started talking about these slightly less obvious symptoms yes. that oh my gosh I'm ticking all of these boxes you so know. what were your issues just a little bit more ratty yeah yeah <laughs> I know, know that one finding finding uh, I had short uh, fuse and patience with things that previously yes. I would have had a little bit more time yeah. for yeah usually my kids um yeah. they bore the brunt of that i would think yeah. probably because you know you kind of put a mask on don't you when you in yes. other situations um feeling that things were a bit yeah you know nothing seemed to give me the yes, joy that flatness yeah it's really that's the i think one of the most awful things actually is this numbness the lack of joy and it is it is that feeling flat and that's why so many women i think are prescribed antidepressants mm -hmm. And actually, there's no clinical evidence to show that an antidepressant will help menopausal low mood caused by low estrogen. The only thing that's going to help is estrogen because yeah. that's what your brain receptors are lacking. That's why mm. you feel bad. And that's why you need to top it back up. And of course, if you're for the first time in your life experiencing that, because I'd always consider myself yeah. to be somebody that was, you know, well, basically my life, exercise and eating well seem to have always been my panacea, basically, you know, so I'd right. enjoy, well, those things weren't giving me any joy, you know, that yeah. the exercise, the endorphins didn't seem to be helping me in the, wow. in the way that they had in the past. So that was when I started to think, well, there's maybe other symptoms I hadn't heard of, you know, and then yeah. you start investigating and reading and realizing there's a whole host a of things. A whole, I think I've listed 45 in the book, but that there are more. And actually one of the surprising symptoms for me, which, you know, I'd love people to be more aware of is that the auricular changes in the ear because I started to get tinnitus and I was really scared that this was going to be like a lifelong diagnosis for me. I've never heard of that before. The yeah and it can also disrupt um, your kind of vestibular balance. Of course. So yeah. women get vertigo, mm -hmm. dizziness mm -hmm. And it's because we have estrogen receptors in our ears, Who like you? everywhere, <laughs> you know, exactly. And I, for me, I didn't realize, I'd, I'd probably been on HRT for about a year and I suddenly realized I don't have any more ringing in my ears. And then I looked into it and I was talking to Dr. Louise Newson mm -hmm. and we, in fact, we did a podcast about it and she said, oh yeah, it's really common. It's really common that, that tinnitus. And again, talking to audiologists, and hearing clinics, how many women, midlife women, go to their doctor suffering from tinnitus or go to a hearing aid clinic or whatever with hearing disturbances or hearing loss even, and nobody's joining the dots. Mm -hmm. It's the same with dentistry. I was talking to a dentist about what the changes that happen in the mouth mm -hmm. because we lose estrogen from our gums. And that and causes then the teeth tooth sensitivity and, and gum receding mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and all of that. And, and it's like, this is a sure sign that you, you need to replace your estrogen if you're going to keep healthy mouth and teeth and gums. There are we, many areas, aren't there, that estrogen can help. Every um, area. But very few recognize uh, in yeah. the NICE guidelines, which has led to some confusion and women get bombarded in many ways and nowadays yeah. I mean it didn't used to be like that but with different messages about whether they yeah. should they shouldn't and and the thing that I don't know about you that comes through people who write into me through my podcast mm. um, the kind of questions they want to ask the experts who come on the overriding one always seems to be should I you know it's yeah. it's it's this real kind of reticence yeah. uh, in some way it's almost I compared it at the very beginning of doing a podcast on midlife to going back to baby days when people were really nervous about any kind of pain relief in childbirth and how somehow they were letting the side down if they if they did. Yeah. And it, it feels a bit like we're going through that with HRT, yeah. that yeah. somehow I'm, I've got to battle through this. You would not say to a diabetic, do you know, I, I think I really think you should try and avoid the insulin. You know, I, I think you should you should just, you know, maybe have a nap in the afternoon, have a lie down and uh, let's do some, you know, CBT cognitive behavioral therapy and some breath work yeah. you know you just wouldn't say that would no. you and you wouldn't say that to somebody who needed thyroxine 
if no. you had a thyroid issue. These are hormones. Mm. And so why you would say to a woman who's losing her estrogen in midlife, suffering often debilitating, crippling health symptoms, oh, I don't think you should have your hormones back, mm. you know. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's so antiquated. And I write actually in the book, in one of the chapters, I write about the patriarchal medical system. And you only have to not go back very far to realize that most modern prescription drugs have never been tested on women. Mm -hmm. So how do they work with our own estrogen levels? Well, I've got no idea, I've never tested them. So it, it's, it just is, it seems a sort of women's issues mm. that it's all to do with just periods. Just 51% of the, of the yeah. planet then. <laughs> exactly, only, only just over half the population, you know, and doctors aren't trained, even in medical school, you know, you might get a couple of hours if you're lucky. And they spend a lot of time studying obstetrics and postnatal health and pregnancy mm. care and rightly so. But not everybody is going to have a baby. Not every woman is going to have a baby. Every woman will have a menopause mm. if she lives long enough. And one in a hundred women will have an early menopause. You know, she might be in her thirties. Mm. Or you might get plunged into a surgical menopause mm -hmm. because of chemotherapy or medical treatment or hysterectomy or oophorectomy or whatever. So it's, uh, I, I think we're living in the dark ages or have been. Mm. And I think that my daughter's generation, you know, will will be treated hopefully very differently. And they'll look back at this time and they'll say with incredulity, well, what do you mean they expected you to live and survive without, without. your hormones? Mm. And I think there's an interesting case for should women be given prophylactic estrogen earlier on before you even develop symptoms. Mm. And some of the studies looking at brain health, particularly mm. Alzheimer's and dementia, show that the earlier you take replacement estrogen, mm. the better your brain health. Mm. I just wish somebody had said to me in my mid forties, mm. here's some estrogen because it's going to be good for your brain. Well, the, the um, I went to see Dr. Sarah Matthews when I first recognized these perimenopausal symptoms. And, um, and obviously not every woman does this, but I decided to have blood tests to find mm -hmm. out. And they're not yep. always completely hundred percent accurate because of the cycle. But I actually hadn't noticed that I was having very few periods because I've never had mm. particularly massive period issues do you yeah. know what I mean? they weren't yeah. they were just there and um and she rang me up and she said are you with somebody and i thought oh my gosh what's she oh, going to tell no. me but she later explained that when she delivers this news sometimes to women they feel very bereft with what she was about to say which was that she said she thought i had two periods left in my life and she proved to be absolutely no, bad on. No, isn't that extraordinary? Yeah. And she said, you've got about two periods left. And I said, really? And I said, no, I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm absolutely Yeah, yeah. great. <laughs> and she said, your hormones are so on the floor. She said, I don't know how you're getting up in the morning and I'd like you to come and see me and get yourself. Wow. Yeah. And, um, and the effect was so quick. The turnaround was so for me quick too. for me. Um, and yeah. she also prescribed, because a lot of people assume it's going to be progesterone and estrogen. Yeah. She also prescribed testosterone. I didn't realize, you know, that yeah. that was going to also take a nosedive. Yeah. So I learned a lot more about that. But it's amazing how many women don't have testosterone prescribed. It's a scandal. Prescribed. It's an absolute scandal. It's a female hormone. We produce three times more testosterone in our ovaries than we do estrogen. People think it's just the male hormone, mm -hmm. but it's very much a female hormone. So for me, I was on a probably more conventional journey in that I had estrogen and progesterone, got those balanced, um, was on that for about six months or so. And funny enough, it was Louise who picked up testosterone for me because I was doing a podcast with her and it was face to face and we were chatting and I was struggling for the odd word. You know, word recall. Mm. And it was like, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, no, it'll come back to me in a moment. <laughs> yeah, and it was, and she, and afterwards she said to me, I didn't know her very well then, and uh, she said, actually, Liz, um, do you, do you mind me saying something personal? I said no. This was after we'd stopped mm. recording, and she said, uh, I think you might benefit from some testosterone, because one of the key signs is word recall. And testosterone is really important for memory loss and cognitive function and mental clarity. Everyone mm. thinks it's just the sex hormone mm -hmm. and because it's prescribed for libido mm. and it has you know, no other kind of clinical data to support it. It's like, again, coming back to that patriarchal system, oh, you know, she won't have sex with me. Oh, let's give her some more testosterone then because that's going to you know, impact on the guys here, mm. not oh, well, you know, she needs to be thinking straight mm. and have her moods improved and her muscle strength protected because mm -hmm. that's all to do with testosterone. So so it was, yeah, it was Louise who, who got me some testosterone in the first instance. And 
immediately, again, that clarity of thought was just extraordinary.